Good morning. It's a Thursday and still January, the longest month of the year. My name is Pia Erkinheimo, and with me, I have here the CEO at A Talent, Niklas Huotari. Welcome, Niklas. Thank you very much. Nice to be here in this beautiful morning. Yes, indeed. Let me first challenge you, uh, uh, dear Fiban and friends, with a question. Uh, my name is Pia Erkinheimo, and uh, I've been angeling at Fiban very many years. And now uh, I like to hear from you first the crucial topic of our talk, which is recruiting a new CEO. How and when? So, dear audience, dear listeners, what are the most critical factors for CEO success? Please share your thoughts now and get, get your gray brain cells uh, working. And in the meanwhile, when I wait, we wait for your, your wise words uh, in Mentee, where the code is 63006. O two eight, so six three o o six o two eight. I'd like to ask from you, Nicholas, uh, how did you end up to your role as a CEO? Please share a bit of your your career path. Uh, yes. Um, first of all, uh, good morning, everyone. Nice to be here. Uh, my name is Nicholas Waldari. I'm the CEO of A Talent, which is a recruiting agency focused on on people with higher education. Um, we recruit about 500 people a year, and, and regarding this topic, I think it's interesting that I was a CEO which was hired outside of the company, and at the time we had uh, 30 employees, and now we have 50. Um, <clears throat> but a bit about my background, uh, I studied business at Aalto University, uh, focusing on leadership and management and strategy, and I've been working in pharmaceutical industry after my graduation uh, at GlaxoSmithKline. Uh, and also I've been working in uh, HR industry for basically the whole time of my studies. So I have pretty strong background in, in HR. Uh, I was working in a company which did outplacement, for example, uh, leadership coaching and change management. And, and now I'm, I'm kind of where I really want to be, which is focusing on people and recruiting the best talents to the companies operating in Finland. Excellent. How long time have you been um, as a CEO for a talent? Uh, in summer, I, I, uh, I turned five years in, in A Talent. So, uh, seeing, seeing the uh, different uh, ups and downs of a recruitment agency. Uh, but, but yeah, five years now. Okay, very, very cool, very great. Uh, what do you know about FIBAN, by the way? Uh, first of all, thank you for the great 10 years party of, of FIBAN. It was nice to be there. As well. <laughs> um, so, as a, as a partner, Mm, at, at FIBAN, I've been seeing your operations uh, for one year now, uh, and I think it's wonderful that you do in, in Finland, uh, supporting the startups and, and creating the business here in Finland, which is crucial for the whole society. Okay, thank you for your kind words. Now, let me check out what our dear community uh, audience listeners have been thinking. Hmm, Niklas, what do you say? We are now actually looking at screen. So screen here, if you wonder what we are actually doing here. So we are getting a tag cloud uh, and mm, in the center of it, it says focus. Yeah, very important, uh, definitely since for the CEO, the, the role and, and the company situation can be really diverse. And, and for the CEO, it's really important, of course, to see the big picture and, and focus on the most important matters. Uh, as eff effectively as possible, it's easy to get lost in all the details and, and wander around. Uh, but but focusing the most important matters is is always always the key. Uh, <clears throat> what caught my eye the first was was empathy, which is also in the in the mm -hmm. middle. <clears throat> uh, the CEO role is a leadership role, and, mm -hmm. and to be able to actually make an impact. Uh, it often happens through other people. Uh, so if you forget empathy and, and the people skills, uh, no matter how technically savvy you are or how clever and how well you're aware of the industry mm. dynamics and everything, if you're not being able to uh, work with people, then 
it's it's not probably going to be a good good success. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, as as we find here, also ability to execute, determination, impactfulness. Um, I think those uh, three actually go together quite well. Yeah, definitely, and also the the get get shit done which is, mm. I would say, the same thing as ability to execute. Um, there's a lot of people who, who talk the talk, but are you actually able to effect, effectively do the things that, that matter uh, and make things happen? Then that separates many people about as well. Yes, I, I, I understand and agree, actually. Uh, then there is, the, there is also the supporting uh, actors like trust, drive, uh, spirit. Uh, these are also also kind of a one cluster. Uh, what do you think, Niklas? How how would you actually, uh, when as a new CEO uh, joining joining the team, uh, potentially coming external? Let's then talk a little bit about different situations. Uh, but how do you think the the topic of trust? How could a new CEO gain trust, both from the team the the team, but also from from her board. I, I think trust is one of the most most important things for the CEO, of course, because the CEO CEO operates uh, hundred percent based on trust uh, from the board. If the trust is gone, then then the CEO is gone. Uh, but um, I we probably will go later into the recruitment process. Yeah. But but it starts already there uh, for the CEO uh, coming into a new company. Um, it's really, really important to get to know the people that are working in the company, hopefully already during the recruitment process, um, because that's when you first start making the connections inside the company. Mm -hmm. uh, you are establishing the trust. And, and if you think of the kind of one of the biggest mistakes that could happen, mm -hmm. uh, both from the board's, board's point of view uh, and, and the CEO point of view and the whole company point of view, is that the new CEO is, is repelled by the rest of the company and doesn't fit into the organization and, and the rest of the employees think that, okay, this is, this is not a good fit. We don't like the person. Uh, that, that's the way the destruction uh, in the really early beginnings. So as, as mentioned, as, as cricket, critical factors uh, by, the, by the audience here, uh, having mm -hmm. the empathy, empathy and, and just being humble in the beginning Mm. If you go in as an authoritarian figure and, and you take your trust and, and your place in the organization by force, mm. uh, which might, might be that some people do, and I've actually seen those, those cases as well, okay. um, it's really hard to make the company work as a team uh, and to gather people around you and make them follow you naturally uh, if you kind of try to force yourself into and. and for, from the day one, start telling everyone what to do um, instead of listening first. Because uh, if you're coming in as a, as a new CEO, um, there's probably people that have been doing that uh, mm. work for a longer time. So I think the first thing that the new CEO has to do is to listen and understand what is this business about? Please tell me, help me to succeed in this role. Uh, and, and, and to mm. show that help me to help you yeah mm. yeah and, and to show that I'm here also to make your life easier and make you succeed in your roles uh, as, as employees mm. uh, so showing the support around you and, and making it a team yeah uh, wise words indeed when then when you come to uh, different stages of the growth company or the startup mm. so sometimes uh, there is no there is not a kind of a, uh, there is not a, a structure, it's not yet operationally, uh, you know, structured in a manner um, that, that actually can be kind of uh, grasped in a, in a short period of time. Mm. So, uh, and then on the other hand, it also has to do, uh, you know, with the situation uh, regarding what happened with the previous CEO, because the change is always, um, you know, there, it's a continuum of something that happened earlier. Yeah. So how would you describe then 
uh, the situation or what things to take into account um, if the CEO is coming inside the, inside the startup, if the CEO is one of the co-founders, mm -hmm. or if the CEO is the first one after the founding team member. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do you, how, what do you, what kind of things need to take into account in these three different uh, scenarios? <clears throat> um, yeah, there's like, regarding the CEO, the skills needed depend, of course, on what the situation is, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and the behavior and, and how to do everything. If it's a uh, member of the founding team, they probably know each other already and, and the dynamics might work really well. Uh, but I think it's really important at that point to really go openly through mm -hmm. that. What is actually the role of the CEO now? How does it differ from being a founder? So avoiding the situation where the things go as normal because it's just an, like no, nobody set up properly the expectations. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. uh, so that's definitely one thing that I would, I would do straight away. Um, <clears throat> then regarding, uh, for example, the case where there's uh, a previous CEO has been already in the company yeah. and then the new CEO is coming in. I think they're definitely one of the most crucial roles of the board is to make sure the previous CEO is still somehow aboard with, um, with kind of training and everything. And I know that's not always the easiest case. Mm -hmm. if, if, for example, the CEO has been let go. Yeah. Uh, but I would still emphasize, even in that case, try to make it in good manners. Uh, because if there's nobody to help the new CEO kind mm -hmm. of rolling in, uh, the previous CEO has, has all the knowledge, has already done the work, uh, so he or she can help quite a lot yeah. in, in that process. So one of my key tips would be to, even if you have to let a previous CEO go, try to do it in as, as good manner as possible. Well, as, maintain, as, as always. Yeah, yeah. De definitely. <clears throat> uh, then again, if, if it's coming from inside of the team, then there's always the power, power dynamic of, of first being one one member of the team and then yeah. uh, rising up to be the CEO. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, then it helps. And, and one thing for the board to co consider uh, when recruiting the CEO, of course, is that does the potential CEO, can CEO candidate have the trust of mm -hmm. the rest of the employees? Is it the natural kind of a leader of, of that group? Uh, because if it goes like that, then it's quite an easy thing. Everybody yep. in the in the... Uh, as, as an employee, seeing that, okay, this is a good fit, we're happy to take mm. him or her as a, as a leader. Um, if not, then it probably needs a bit more, uh, how, how would you say, like, <clears throat> uh, it's a bit more of a struggle. And then I would recommend more to kind of show openly that, that this is the person that we, we, we trust. To follow uh, mm, and, and the team should follow. Yeah. Mm. So, so show that we have chosen this person for a reason and, and like give it also some time. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> and then um, for the new CEO, like rising from the team, of course, it needs even a bit more humility because there might be some other candidate in the same group that didn't get the like yes selected mm. so still trying to maintain the team spirit and everything like that but uh, it's not an easy easy case and that's where the people skills become really crucial yes very very good uh, good uh, points indeed uh one of my experience uh, uh, one of the companies that i i've been working and chairing the board um had an interesting um decision already uh, from the very beginning there were three co-founders from uh, two countries, uh, three uh, different cities. And uh, they decided that they actually will circulate mm -hmm. among the co-founders, the role of the CEO. And uh, uh, I had the pleasure of experiencing, you know, as, a, as an investor, but also a member of the uh, leadership team. And then later at the, as a chairman of the board mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, now it's kind of uh, the third one will soon take take uh, his role as a CEO, but I was also following the transition, uh, and it worked. It has worked quite well, and the dynamics as such. And since it was uh, agreed already in the very early 
in the beginning uh, among the key, key uh, co-founders. And uh, maybe there was a slight junior, uh, seniority juniority because the third one, third uh, one is uh, by age, physical age is actually, uh, she's perhaps the youngest. So I think there is still some years to go. Actually, I don't know how these three, uh, three founders made the decision because it was such an early time of the, of the nascence of the business idea of the company. But I, I found it quite, quite nice. Uh, and, um, and I observed very closely that, that when the CEO, the co-founder uh, who took the role first, uh, resigned but continued as the as uh, uh, responsible for sales and everything. So uh, the, the organization ad adjusted also because it was openly shared yeah. that this is the, the way to go. From the board perspective, and let's come now to the question, what's the role, uh, of, what is the role of the board when hiring or firing the CEO? Mm -hmm. So from our perspective, uh, when I joined the board, it was also kind of given uh, that okay, it most likely will go like this. So uh, we kind of uh, built the trust among all co-founders then thinking. And of course, um, but then there can be also other situations where the CEO has been part of the co-founding team and she uh, will actually uh, decide that now, now it's the time to, to hire uh, an external CEO. And that was actually the case uh, in your personal situation. Yeah. So how, uh, how would you describe that? Uh, wasn't it so that there was still a um, founder CEO on board and you replaced uh, him or her or how did it go? No, um, yeah, first of all, yeah. <clears throat> um, I think with the three CEO circulating, that was a really interesting way of, of, of working. And, and I would say that after the, kind of circulating the CEOs, I would say that it's a really strong team because everybody has had to um, like move around a bit and adapt the situation. Uh, I can also see some some kind of bad sides for that. Of course, there uh, it's but, always. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's an interesting way. I haven't heard that before. <clears throat> um, but w when it comes to recruiting uh, and the board's role in recruiting a CEO from yeah. outside and how... Uh, how was my situation was that there was a previous CEO and um, and and she was uh, she was leaving leaving the company uh, for for new challenges and then um, uh, I got a phone call uh, from the board of uh, board of directors um, from from like um, the pre previous recruitment processes um, I was actually considered to being the CEO. Uh, like three years ago or something like that. Okay. Uh, so I was all, had already applied and I was the second in that that process. Uh, okay. But it it had a really good kind of feeling on both sides, even though I, I wasn't uh, uh, selected at, at that point. I continued in, in other direction. And then um, then I got a call. Hey, we re remember you from last time. Uh, would you like to like consider this this role? And then we had a proper process and everything. <clears throat> but uh, then, yeah, it, it was the responsibility responsibility of the board and, and if you're thinking of the role of the board uh, first of all like obviously mm. you have to own the process yes uh, one of the most important roles of the board is to hire and fire the ceo yes if, if you think of other roles such as like oversight and uh, and strategy uh, those things come <laughs> way easier if you mm. succeed in, yes in, that in, is true yeah. the, the right ceo uh, <clears throat> but um, as, as in my case, uh, I knew the company from, from three years ago. Yes. Uh, one of the most important things for the succeeding in the, in the CEO recruitment is, all, of course, for the board to being already networking, uh, like way before you need the new CEO mm -hmm. and, and kind of keeping the candidate pool warm, not yes. knowing the people. Because uh, when you really, if it comes as a surprise that you need a new CEO uh, and you want it fast, the CEO recruitment process might not be a fast one if you want want to have a good person. Yeah. So so you need to be kind of already a bit prepared for that, even though you you wouldn't think of that. Uh, yeah. Even. Mm. Well, that is that's that's a good tip in a sense, and indeed, it's the most important thing uh, um, for the board to to select the CEO. Um, I think that the 
one thing that needs to be uh, clearly in the heads of the board is that they will have a realistic picture of the company um, and uh, what is actually the decision making inside the company they had to they you know the board members have to have the pulse pulse uh, um, and understand uh, based on you know first of all it's a tough decision especially if there is a there is a kind of a um, understanding on the board that it will they need to change the ceo that it will be initiated uh, by the board mm -hmm. uh, so that is uh, that then that's a lot big decision uh, even though i've also heard that uh, i've or more often heard that ah, we should have changed the ceo earlier mm. um, maybe that's more of kind of a chit chat talk because uh, i feel that when being member of the board you have to have a very balanced understanding of the operations that they are taking place uh, before taking such such a step especially it's if it's a if it's a ceo that has uh, enjoyed the trust of the board and the company and the and the customers um, you know for quite some time and and first find out if there is uh, what are the what are the you know reasons behind perhaps not performing as good as in earlier phases then of course there is the situation from the board's perspective when the board has a strong understanding of the strategy and it creates a delta between the vision and the understanding of the ceo mm. so um, then this is also a situation where kind of a uh, you know the paths may may apart uh, uh, have you have you any experience on that situation where where whether where you know there uh, it's more of a you know substance and strategic uh, difference in seeing the future of the company mm. um I, I would probably kind of think of the situation so that um, <clears throat> or, or or focus on the matter of of the role of the board like in in, in that case mm. as you said i really agree that uh, the board needs to have a clear understanding of what is the overall situation of the company and what do we actually need because that's the kind of key selling point uh, in the recruitment process to the, the, mm. the new, new CEO candidates as well yeah. because their first question will be okay what is my job because there's so many different situations and, and so, so many different stages of, mm. of companies uh, and the potential candidates they will not want to know as soon as possible, okay, what do you want me actually to do? What is the expectation for the CEO? Because only after that, you can really start thinking, is this, a, is this the job for me or not? Uh, so then you can have a, like a real proper discussion. And that's, yep. that's something that the, if, if it's a qualified candidate, uh, he or she really wants to know what, what kind of place uh, he or she is sailing into. Uh, yes. Um, and, and also like, really to be able to like structure the role and, and whether it's so that, uh, okay, you figure out as a board, this is something that we need. We need this kind of CEO that, that will be able to take us from, from this level to the next one. Uh, after that, you need to start kind of drafting out in a way a job description, if you, if you call it that. Yes. Uh, and then, then based on that, you start sourcing from LinkedIn or, or from your networks, mm -hmm. maybe publishing an ad, if that's what you want to do, maybe hiring a recruitment agency to do that. And then, uh, then you start contacting and having the discussion with the, with the potential people. And, and only after you know the situation really well, you are able to like do it, uh, go, go through. And of course, it's always a discussion and dialogue with the candidates mm -hmm. as well. Uh, and probably something you want to use as a board. Uh, you have some kind of idea what should happen and then you discuss with the potential candidates how do they see the situation and, and how would they uh, react or, or what do they think is the most important focus points. Uh, but you can never leave it to, the, of course, the new, new CEO candidates because they don't have a clue what's happening inside. Yes. Um, and, and therefore, I also recommend that, that the board, before making a big drastic changes, would 
talk with the other employees in some form as well, if possible, to really get a proper understanding on, on like yeah. what, what's, the, what's, what's going the, on. What's going on. Yeah, and yeah. Um, Niklas, I, lo- I loved you already guessed my, my next question, which was what, what would be the process of selecting a CEO? Yeah. And I think you've answered to that beautifully. So, but then it's really like, what's your experience? What's, how does uh, recruiting a CEO to our, you know, established company differ from uh, recruiting uh, for a eager hunger startup? What, what, how would you characterize, you know, the differences? Yeah, it's a big difference. Uh, from thinking, for example, from my perspective, if I would, if I would be uh, in the discussions for hiring or being hired as a CEO for a startup, uh, it's really like, like in, in a way a bit unstable because a startup often is, is in, in the beginning of the, mm. of the path and, and you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, mm. So what you need to figure out first is, is that, is this a board I can trust? Uh, who are these people? Mm. Uh, what's the situation of the company? Mm. Is, is there funding? How secure is, is everything? Have, uh, what's the market, like product market fit? How does the future seem like? Uh, and then, uh, for example, I myself came from from a big corporation. I had yes. a like a steady, really bright future career path in front of me, and then I was offered a role in in a in a company which was a lot smaller and and different uh, situation. So, mm, what, what the potential CEO candidate thinks, of course, is that okay, what is the upside of this? Mm. So then, then it comes to like the prospects of the future and the compensation model and, and yep. everything like that. And, and it's important to understand that uh, making a big career change, which is like starting as a new CEO, you're always a bit afraid and you're thinking that, okay, what if I fail? Mm. But then you have to think, what if I succeed? succeed. And that's the role of the board as well. And, and, and kind of go through with the process of a, like a good dialogue and trust so that the potential CEO candidate understand that, that he or she is not alone in this. Mm. And the board wants the person to succeed mm. and, and is ready to help and be there for him or her. Uh, so mm. that's uh, like, it, go, it goes more easily. Uh, but yeah, like trying to get away from the amb- ambiguity and and uh, like the a bit kind of unstable things that might uh, haunt you in the back of your head uh, like tackling those then everything mm. goes more easily uh, how by the way um, just from timeline mm. how long time does it take to hire a ceo for a startup <clears throat> a good question um, it can be really fast if you're hiring a person who doesn't work anywhere so if mm. you get a person from the street uh, without, yes. without a job, then uh, yes. right away, why not? Um, but then again, often the candidates are working in a, in a role that is already somehow w- with a big responsibility. Mm. Uh, responsibility, and and often a good CEO is a person who doesn't want to leave their previous employee in in a bad situation. So they want to like. Um, they want to carry the responsibility uh, up to the very end, so that yeah. everybody leaves from the previous job with the, with good terms and and, yeah. and trust. Yeah. So it might be so that the the candidates say that okay, I have this project or I have this situation that I cannot leave yet. It takes at least three months, six months, mm. even a year before I can I, I can easily say that, okay, this is okay for me to leave. They might have bonus or some like compensation systems mm. that. They just don't want to leave yet because they are waiting for the yeah. The in, in, the, in a in a finisher, them you should you you always change you know first of April. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For example, yeah, that that's that's one case. So considering that, it might take some time. Uh, and of course, uh, like on top of that, there's always the process. Yeah. Which which like in the quickest form, if you are really fast, uh, it's it's a one month thing. Uh, mm. That's what we have learned that a talent like it can be quicker but one month it is is kind of a normal normal time but as a ceo it's a bit more like heavy process you probably maybe want to do some psychological testing for example at some Mm. point Uh, you want uh, as a board for the new 
potential candidates to discuss with the team so that the mm. team can say their opinion whether this might be a fit or not uh, if they have the right skills or not um so it's it so it takes time it, it it, and time. usually yeah. it takes always longer than expected Definitely. uh because the because then you are like uh, as a board member or a hiring hiring a uh, superior you always like okay i've made my choice my made decision i mean we do it and that, that, that. and then it's like oh but when could she leave from the previous challenge yeah. so and very always, interesting say, preparing for the worst there might be so that there's your top candidate that you rely on and then it doesn't go through yes uh, and yeah. it and sometimes you you just can't wait for for a half year yeah, i mean like exactly. like that's uh, often unrealistic in the time span especially as a, as as a, a, as a startup you you have a runway yeah, so yeah. uh very good hey uh we are also looking for as you hear, as you can see it niklas has very wise points to to all 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 angels and friends so uh please uh, post some questions we will take them them by um, um, as soon as, as possible, we'll receive them. So it's really about Q&A. What would you like to ask uh, from our, from our uh, interview? Uh, please, the floor is yours, dear audience, dear listeners. Um, and while waiting that, I still have here one kind of a, kind of a bit of a mm, kind of a, hmm. Words of warning from you still. You are so energetic and give you us a good spirits for the morning. So uh, a bit of a warning signal still. So what could be like a few warning, uh, warning indicators that, that the, the, this uh, fit with the company uh, between company and the CEO may not be right? Really important question. Uh, and unfortunately, it might be so that you only realize it after the person is already hired. So mm. uh, starting from there, I would say that it's really important after hiring a new CEO uh, for the board uh, to bit look after on how, how is it going. I would really recommend talking with the employees uh, on, on a confidential uh, basis on, okay, what, what to say? How, how is the new CEO mm. doing? Is, is, is him, he or her the right fit? Because there you will get the knowledge. Uh, and you can mm. kind of spot the early signs if it's going to, to the right direction or not, and then uh, the board can uh, can intervene and and make things better. Mm. On the other hand, um, um, as a board member, um, I've always keep kept a very clear uh, clear, clear kind of um, line in that that um, the CEO is always aware of if if the member of the board uh, contacts the operational yeah, team. Yeah. So in, in doing this also in a very, very open manner so that, hey, so that, because I think this is, this mm -hmm. is really crucial. Sometimes, sometimes there can be a tendency, uh, especially with startups where the roles are multiple, multiple, mm -hmm. multiple, the angel can be also there with the, with the sweat capital or the angel can be part of the uh, leadership team as such. Uh, it varies, but yeah. but but in general. So uh, for me, at least, this has been like a total total no go to communicate directly with the operational team unless unless uh, if it's in via mail, which usually these discussions should not maybe mm -hmm. take place. But anyhow, so at least that there that the CEO is clearly 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 kind of a CC that said that as discussed in the board meeting, um, I'm happy to talk with with the with uh, the the person responsible for R&D because I had this specific question that I'm very interested in. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I, I agree. And I was yeah. going to continue that. Uh, for example, in my case, uh, the, the chairman of the board um, openly said that, of course, when, when you're just like starting, we want to make sure that everything goes as well as possible. And we will have discussions with, for example, the rest of the leadership team. Yep. Uh, to kind of get feedback and, and see how things are going. And I think it was like, of course, like yep. it's a really important thing. And of course, they want to make sure that. Yes, goes. but you were, we, we were openly and now, uh, you know, yeah. informed and, uh, and uh, understood the point of view. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, like secrecy in that case is not the good thing because one of the most important things is, is the trust between board and the CEO. Yes. And if the CEO feels that there's no trust. And somebody goes side, and somebody yeah, goes like behind. It's not a good start. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, I have a huge list of still and time runs. 
Uh, so uh, we have great questions here. Which one we have? Uh, which one would you like to pick up first? Uh, can you read the uh, screen yeah. one where we yeah. received many questions? So it's so far away, so closer to me. So hey, uh, how recruitment processes have changed during the pandemic? Yes. Mm, well, obviously everything has gone to Zoom or Skype or or Meet or on on video format. Um, that's of course one one quite crucial thing uh, since like in the beginning of of the recruitment process i think one of the most important things for the for the board or chairman of the board whoever is doing the recruiting is to like build the trust mm -hmm. between the candidates because it's a big decision for them and and like and and I, i'm selling the company you know yeah. like hey yeah. there is this great potential and a great team already and join us so yeah. so it's really like that yeah so um, yeah i would recommend still seeing seeing face to face maybe over a lunch or, or however to kind of start slowly building the trust uh, but how the process have changed during the pandemic uh, it's becoming more digital like obviously yeah, it, it has been yeah. before already but even more and more all the all the interviews have like more standardly being uh, being on on, on Google Meets and so on. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that, that's the reality. Yeah, maybe I would say about the the times that we're living at the moment. There's a huge talent shortage, mm -hmm. uh, which is like maybe not related to pandemic it, itself, uh, but the times are are a bit tough for, for yes. hiring new people, and that affects um, how pandemic has changed the world. Is so that uh, actually, quite many people are like ready to change jobs at the moment, yeah. Uh, and that has affected people. We're, like, there's a talking about the Great Resignation, uh, and we actually made a study with 1,400 um, uh, replies from from different people in in Finland. Uh, about a quarter of people uh, are thinking of like leaving their job at the moment. So there might be a lot of potential candidates in the market mm. at the moment but uh you may also lose a hell of a good of a ceo yeah definitely okay and, and out of those people that are at, like ready to to change jobs they might not be actively applying they're just thinking okay i might i might be changed change a job if i get good, of, good enough an offer so finding those people is a challenge but at the same time there's a huge battle for the talent, for the, so, yeah. so there's mm. those people that you want. There's probably many other companies that want as well. Uh, so you got to step up your game. <laughs> Good. Hey, then uh, something that um, that is also often situation: how to replace the CEO who is reluctant and is the bigger owner, so uh, more than fifty percent. So uh, she's the, able to block the decisions. And uh, this is indeed often often the case in early startups. Um, what's your tip in that, that situation? Hmm. Yeah, yes, so, sounds hard. Uh, I don't have an uh, like an experience from exactly this situation, but like open discussion is, I, I think, one of the only ways. I don't know if there's some some legal ways to, to do it or not. Uh, but I would definitely just go with an open like intervention from the from the whole whole team uh, and just discuss it openly. But honestly, I, I don't know what to do in that situation. <laughs> Probably there's more people in in the engine in investors uh, scene and and people from the audience who who know this answer better than mine. I would call someone and ask. <laughs> Good, uh, humble question, humble answer indeed. Uh... Yeah, I'm trying to go through my my uh, experience and those situations. Um, it is a it is a it is a tough call indeed. Indeed. Uh, maybe we just take the next question. Yeah. Rem out. Yes, remuneration. Uh, founder owning percentage of the company. Uh, so a founder CEO versus external. How to uh, you know approach this? Uh, you know, to be fair, and what are the considerations? So I, I believe that the question question is really about that. Uh, that um, uh, when you uh, you know uh, how do you how do you 
compensate. Mm. How do you compensate uh, the new CEO coming outside uh, compared to the CEO, which is also uh, also uh, a co co owner? Mm. <clears throat> All right, uh, this is interesting thing uh, to consider since one thing to keep in mind that you have to be able to sell the position to the new person uh, and the person outside of the company doesn't have the same emotional connection and everything related to building the company so he or she is looking completely from the outside mm. and, and is thinking that is this a good carrier move for me mm. is this something that has enough of an upside mm. but also at the same time security probably people have more mortgages or something like that that they have to pay and they probably maybe have a family to feed or something so there needs to be a basic level of security that uh, yes. the opposition to of course to perform to tra transition uh, but at the same time like probably for a startup ceo one of the things that is interesting to them is, is kind of the going after the big fish mm -hmm. so building it so that there's an upside uh, so that uh, when you go in as a ceo you probably want to like commit yourself for for a long time and and see the company grow so of course compensating for that is is like uh, like a no-brainer i don't have an exact model on how that should be done Mm. And and you guys know know better on on how to build. Mm, yes, how to how to make build an option plan or mm. or you know it's also depends of the stage of the company. Sometimes when when hiring the first external people for the founding team is is a place or founding the company there has been kind of a mm. uh, kind of a models how to how much a percentage of the shares actually to spare for for. Um, for a kind of a, mentally at least to make a mental note for for oneself that okay i i think that you know this amount of shares is actually reserved for the first external uh, key persons mm. uh, and for the sake in case there will be also a ceo uh, external ceo mm. sometimes the co-founders already already know that hey we'll take this up to one year two year three years and uh, then then uh, then there will be an external CEO. Mm -hmm. I've seen models where the co-founders um, decide, you know, just for the balance and dynamics in the company, um, they will hire a CEO, a, a external CEO from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And that may be, may be kind of a healthy, especially if that person is, you know, is um, balancing the skill set, um, know-how set, as well as then bringing, bringing you know, bringing kind of the the harmony to the to the structure and how 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 the company is is organized from the ownership perspective yeah and i may i would say one rule of thumb is that probably for the external ceo it's good to prepare yourself mentally that you have to pay a bit more uh as the yeah, basic, sure. basic salary yeah. uh, because in that case you have already figured out that what you need and you're going after some specific type of person, uh, which is an expert in, in his or her field, that is like a person that many people want. So the, probably the salary level is, is quite high, in, uh, at, least, at least higher than... than a Among co-founders, yeah. potentially, yeah. Hey, we have two minutes to go. Nikos, what would you say now on this on this uh, lovely Thursday morning, <laughs> January, the longest month of the year, uh, soon to be ending? So you know, final tip or a word uh, for a, for a Fiban and friends, what to take in, what is kind of a, what to not forget at least uh, when hiring a CEO. What not for not not to forget is that the role of the CEO is to bring people together and, and it's a leadership role. You make things happen uh, so that they come through, the results come through other people. So when hiring a CEO, it might be easy to go into a mental mode of, of finding some sort of expert or industry uh, professional that knows in, in and out how, how the industry dynamics work. 
but if the person doesn't have leadership skills and and people skills uh i don't think there's like as good uh, possibilities for for a big success because when the company grows the person the ceo cannot do everything by him or herself but needs to attract uh give the spirits up uh for the great people that actually <laughs> make, make, the, make, make it make it happen, happen. so then don't forget the really really important leadership skills and people skills thank you very much niklas oh what a morning i'm so energized and good have a have a good day all of you uh dear audience dear listeners on the line and see you this year hopefully physically thank you very much have a nice day all of you